Welcome back guys, Alex here with another video, I hope you're well. Well, we really have hit the big time now, 3,000 subs, fuck my old boots. <laughs> Unbelievable. How many years have I been on YouTube? Maybe five, six, something like that. I never ever thought I'd reach 3,000 subs. I've got to thank all of you guys for tuning in to this channel. Um, and you know, it's just about the games, I guess, really, at the end of the day, you all want to see what other people are picking up, what other people are playing, is what I tune into. And um, I hope, you know, the content is cool enough for you to carry on watching. Um, I try my best with limited resources. You know, I only use my iPhone for, for filming. I've actually just got another light in here because the lighting was so bad on the last video. So I'm hoping the lighting's a bit better on this one. Um, and, you know, going forward, hopefully more game room tours and more pickups and arcade stuff is, you know, it's what it's all about. It's the hobby that I'm in, you know? So I'll just carry on doing this. It is weird doing YouTube though, because I'm mean, just sat here in front of a camera talking to myself. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and people seem to jump, bump off each other and have a right laugh. You know, it's very hard to do that on your own. But sometimes when I don't get it right, you know, it does take me a few takes, like it, does, it did take me a few takes to do this video. I'm going to start putting my takes, my outtakes, at the end of the video. So if you <coughs> want to see where all my thoughts are, just watch the video right away to the end and you'll see some funny outtakes. But let's get into it, guys. What have I been up to? Um, well, it's been a few weeks now since I last did my last video. And in that time, I went to the London gaming market and picked up uh, a Mega Drive. Which, were, which is what I was going there for, really. Um, I did trade in a load of DS, Game Boy Advance games, stuff like that, because I'm just not playing them. <coughs> you know, and I have moved around so much. I never know where I'm going. I really don't. And I don't know what I can hold on to. It's space, really, for me. It's such a premium. And, I, you know, I love the arcade machines so much. But they take up so much space. But I've managed to hold on to my Super Nintendo collection. And, and going forward, I thought, guys, you know, 16-bit for me is where it's at, you know, and the arcade stuff. So I think going forward, that's where I'm going to be going. I still play a lot of new games, but I might just download them, you know, instead of actually picking up physical, physical copies of them. It's just space, really, at the end of the day. So I'm kind of done with all the limited editions and stuff like that, the big box Super Smash Brothers and stuff like that. I don't need it, you know. I want games in my collection, just loads of them, because I am a player as well. So anyway, this is what I picked up at the London Game Market. It's a modded Mega Drive. But don't worry, guys, I'm not going all Sega. It'll still be Nintendo, a lot of the stuff I'll be picking up. But I know if you're into Nintendo, you're also into Sega as well. And for me, Sega in the arcades was much more prominent than Nintendo. And for me, this brings back a lot of the memories of the arcade. It's just got that Sega sound that you can just hear over everything else. And this is just absolutely brilliant. My brother had a Sega Mega Drive as well. He had, we played Road Rash together. Was never a big Sonic fan, I have to admit, but Road Rash, <coughs> Speedball, was another good game we used to play, Toe Jam and L, stuff like that. But we didn't have that many games. As I say, we were, well, I was working, but he wasn't. He was still at school, so he probably only did a handful of games. But the ones we did play, I'm looking to get back into the collection. And also, a lot of the shooters, a lot of the run-and-gun games, you know, action games, they're the ones I'll be playing. I'm, I'm not going to be picking up any sort of RPGs or anything like that. Just the ones I can just pick up and play and get a, you know, a quick blast for half an hour. So this is really cool. The only thing I'm, I'm a little bit pissed off about is this connection... The dim collection, the dim con connection doesn't quite fit properly. It just sort of hangs there really loosely like that, and obviously, you know, the slightest little bit of movement, and you lose the picture. And I don't know why that is. Me and Roger looked at it. But it was my birthday on Saturday. Actually, I'll get into it in a bit. He had a look at it, but a lot of these connections here are actually split. The metal split, so it allows the metal to move around the the, the actual pins. Well, this doesn't, and I don't know whether that's affecting it or not. Either way, I need a new connection for it, but really cool to pick up a Sega Mega Drive. And of course, I picked up a load of games as well. So I've got a nice little collection going on now. Um, 
So to start off with, these are two games that I bought off my friend Roger Cantor. Um, Space Harrier 2. Don't know if you can see that guy, sorry about a glare. And I do believe Space Harrier 2 is a big improvement on the first one. I'm not sure why, but one of my favourite games in the arcade. Remember, remember, I remember it fondly with the kind of uh, hydraulic chair that used to move around. And when that came out in the arcade, man, we were queuing up for ages to play that. Um, Rambo 3. This looks like a really cool sort of commando vertical sort of shoot them up. Um, or is it? I don't know. Is it the same game? I don't know. The screenshots on the back tell me something different. But we did play it on Saturday. And it was sort of like a commando run and gun game. So that's really cool to get. They're the sort of games I'd be looking for. And guys, if you can recommend any really good Mega Drive games, let me know in the comments below. Crackdown, pick this up on eBay, a tenner. You know, great, great box art, look at that. And this is a bit of a weird one. I thought it was a little, looked a little bit like uh, Grand Theft Auto, but it's not, it doesn't play like that at all. But it is top down, and you've just got to run around sort of um, disarming all the bombs. Um, I've had a quick go of it, it's, it's a lot of fun actually, really really cool, got to about level 3, obviously there's a lot more to it. Um, we've got X Grenada, um, which is like a tank game, this is basically like Gauntlet but with a tank. Um, and the only thing, I, I don't know whether it's a controller, because <coughs> the controller I've got has only got 3 buttons but there's no strafe so you can't move left to right, which you really need with a tank, but I'm not sure whether that's even in the game. Either way, I had a lot of fun with it. As I say, it's a little bit like Gauntlet, sort of that top-down maps, disarming uh, sentry guns and stuff like that and taking out other tanks. Really, really cool. Uh, next up is uh, Phileos, which is reminds me a little bit of Dragon Spirit, which is a vertical shoot 'em up Some really cool end-of-level bosses. See the Medusa's head there, she flies all around. Fantastic box art, look at that, guys. So going forward, I'm definitely going to be going for Japanese only. But when I was at the gaming market on, in London, I didn't know really what I was picking up, really. Someone offered me good deals, so I picked it up. So I've got a couple of power games here as well. Uh, Curse. This is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. Um, fantastic colours. Rock hard, though, guys. Um, yeah, look at the box art. Isn't it cool? Even the manual, it's had some wear and it's got some creases inside, but amazing box art, really, really cool. And I do love the Mega Drive boxes, you know. Super Nintendo games are so hard to find in the conditions that we all look for, you know, because it's been made of cardboard, but these, they seem to last so, so much longer. That's really cool. Sonic, actually I've had this for quite a while. Um, I picked this up last year, I think. It's a bit faded. See the screenshots on the back. It's been sun faded at some point. I've had a quick go at this. I don't know. I'm not a big Sonic fan. It's just like I don't know. Mario, you could sort of stop and think about your moves a little bit more. But this, you, you, I just feel like you'd be getting pushed along all the time, and I don't like that. I like to take my own, take the levels at my own pace. But you know, it's a fantastic. It is a, it is a good game. Next up, we've got a really cool arcade conversion, Flicky. Um, I know the 10 pence arcade podcast if you don't listen to it guys really really cool podcast I, that I used to to be on used to be a host with Victor Marland they covered this game in one of their episodes and this is a fantastic conversion onto the Mega Drive you, you know this, you, this little bird and you have to go around picking up all the little chicks and you have to get into the door at the top without the cats getting you first really cute excellent platform game it really out of all of these games this is actually my favorite it's really really cool next up we've got forgotten worlds i remember this in my local arcade in the joke shop in twickenham but i can't remember whether it had um rotary sticks because it, it's, it's a little bit like robotron you know you you've got your directional joystick and you also eight-way firing directional shooting as well so doesn't work that well on, on buttons, but I think with an extra joystick or rotary stick, this would be really, really cool. Um, fantastic game though, look at that. Really, really cool. 
And again, the sounds in that game just take me back to the arcade. Really, really cool. Next up is Zero Wing. This is one I got at the London Gaming Market. 20 quid, but it didn't have the manual. You know what? I just thought I'd buy it, test it, see if I like it, and if I do, I'll get the Japanese version. And I do. It's, it's um, side scrolling, shoot them up. Um, quite slow paced, and you get the kind of the Sentinel satellite ships pickups that's on the side of your ship there, which is really good. Some really cool end of level buses as well. And then we have Thunder Force 4. Um, this is really fast paced. Um, you know, just after playing Zero Wing, this really like, whoa, this is, you know, and I didn't know actually that you could fly, you, obviously it's a side scrolling shoot map, also you, the screen scrolls down as well. I didn't realize that, I was playing it for ages going in a straight line. But it's really, really cool. Get to select your stages at the beginning and some fantastic parallax scrolling in there as well. Really, really cool, I've recommended this game and it, it is really, really good. So that is the start of my little Mega Drive collection. Really pleased with that. Again, guys, if you know of any cool games, I should be picking up for the Mega Drive. No expensive ones. I'm looking around 30, 50 quid at the moment. Nothing too much, um, unless they're really, really good. But I don't want to be spending. I've got Super Nintendo to pick up, you know. Um, another thing I picked up. This wasn't at the gaming market, but I finally picked up the Art of Atari because I do like Atari. My best friend Tom used to have an Atari 2600, and of course Atari in the arcades um, were quite prominent because, you know, Atari Asteroids, Missile Command, it's got all the fantastic artwork in here, look at that. Uh, but most of these are 2600 game art. It's even got the story about unearthing the mystery of E.T. carts there. I don't know if you've seen that documentary, guys. It's all right. Um... Yeah, some fantastic, look at that, Joust. Really nice book. I picked that up for £18 on eBay, delivered, which is not bad. Really pleased to get that. Also, I picked up another Sony Triniton. This one's a 14-inch with a fantastic screen, 50 quid on eBay. Okay, I don't have to drive 10 miles to get it, but man, this is a fantastic picture. You know, I was umming and ahhing about PVMs and BVMs and all that. They're but ugly. I know they've got a fantastic picture, but for me, this would do. You know, I never had a Sony Trinity back in the day. I probably had an Amstrad or an Alba. Do you remember the Albas or what was the other one? <coughs> there were some really bad TVs made in this country. and My dad always used to buy the worst ones off the back of a lorry. But this one, man, this is the Rolls Royce of CRTs. It's really, really cool. For 50 quid as well. Because I had a little meet the other day. I had a bunch of friends come over because it was my birthday. And I got some really cool presents. Especially for my girlfriend. She knows I like robots. I'm collecting, we're both collecting robots together. Got this little cool little girly robot there. She's got a lightning bolt in her hand. And this little one here with the bug eyes. Slowly building up a little robot collection. Got some fantastic cards. Look at these cards, guys. I never had these cards back in the day. Donkey Kong, which was from Fen and Rufus. And this one was from Nush, my girlfriend, which is really cool. Look, the robot from um, Forbidden Planet. And this one, have a flipping brilliant birthday. So cool, such cool cards. Thank everyone for all their birthday wishes on Facebook. Also got this really cool, I don't know if you can see it. It is a Back to the Arcades neon light. I'll turn it off. Isn't that cool? Do love my neon lights to add to the collection. So yeah, um, what else I pick up? I've got a 60-in-1 for my Jammer Cab. Also got my Rescue PCB fix. Thanks for Phil Murray for fixing that and um, uh, Steve for sorting that out. Um, really tough. Rescue is a twin stick shooter, so I've got that in my jammer cab. I'm gonna make that a dedicated rescue cab. Um, what else did I pick up? Mm, PC engine. I've got a PC engine. Look, need forgot about that. It's not in the best of states, but you know, I didn't pay much for it. I think it's about 30 quid. 
got no games of it yet, guys. But can't wait to, to buy some games for that. I know it is a fantastic 8-bit console with a sort of equivalent of 16-bit graphics. Some fantastic games on there that I'm looking to add to start my new PC Engine collection. Again, recommend me any good ones, guys. I'll be mainly going for the arcade conversion. That's what I want to play on it. Um, so that's it. I've got... Man, I've got loads of Super Nintendo stuff to show you, but you're going to have to wait for that for the SNES video. And loads of NES games coming in the post. So don't worry, guys. There's plenty of NES and Nintendo stuff coming on this channel. Um, but, yeah, I've got to say thank you to all those guys for um, subscribing to this channel. 3,000 subs. Can't believe it. Unbelievable. I'm up there with Tootie and Dave now. Unbelievable. Retro Dave. Um, I've also been nominated for YouTuber of the Month, and I've got to thank um, Sega Head for nominating me for that. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. I've, to be honest with you, I've, I haven't followed YouTuber of the Month for a long time now. I don't know. I just don't have time for all the channels. There's just so many channels now. Kind of a selected few. And everything that's been going on in my life, I only watch a few channels now. So sorry if I haven't commented, but I really appreciate you nominating me, mate. You know, it's amazing. So, to if you want to nominate me, I think it's the channel D Do You Nerd. Um, it's a new channel to me. Uh, look like a good bunch of guys there. Go over there and just put a comment in there and say you want to vote for me. Either way, I don't mind if you don't. It really doesn't bother me. But I really appreciate it if you do. Um, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, guys. I mean, wow. It's been a, it's been a long road. I think so. Five or six years I've been doing YouTube. Never thought I'd still be doing it. It's almost like a diary doing YouTube. It's unbelievable. Um, again, I, I do jump into podcasts now and again, and I do enjoy doing that. But with podcasts, you have to sort of select your times with other people, and I'm not always available. With YouTube, for me, it's a lot easier. I can do it when I'm in the mood and when I've got the time. And although it's a lot harder doing it because, you know, you're talking to yourself. And I don't know, it's never scripted. None of my videos are ever scripted. Um, I do enjoy still jumping on the podcast now and again. And there's plenty of really good podcasts out there. Retro Asylum's a fantastic podcast. They actually just did a Popeye um, game challenge, which was really cool. Of course, the Ten Pence Arcade Podcast. You've got Maximum Power Up, my friends Paul and Phil. Um, you've got RGDS. You've got Get to the Chopper with Andy Goodoy. He's still around. I love Andy. He's such a cool guy. There's so many uh, podcasts out there. And to be honest with you, I listen to them more than I watch YouTube channels. Because I'm at work all day and usually on my own. get fed up with listening to politics all the time. So I just stick my headphones on and I'm away, you know, just listen to back games all day. So that's really cool. Um, but I just wanted to mention a couple of other things as well that a couple of other tubers have brought up about advertising and merchandise on, on people's channels. You know, that they have a problem with it. I think Daz mentioned it. To me, it doesn't bother me at all, really, because I don't really watch any channels that don't have any good content. If it's shit content, I won't watch it, you know. And if they want to, if 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 like John Arcade wants to sell John Arcade cap kits at the end of his video, that's up to him. But he does it in such a way he takes the piss out of himself. It doesn't really bother me. His content's so good anyway. For like a minute's worth, if that, at the end of the video, him trying to sell you something, you know, I actually quite find it quite funny. I guess it's when it's shoved down your face, you know. You get a lot of people on Instagram going, follow me, follow me, you know, or subscribe to me. And then straight away, I won't subscribe, you know, and I'll just block them. Because I hate when people shove it down your throat. Um, if I like your channel, then I'll subscribe to it. If you want to sell something on it, it's fine, you know. It doesn't really bother me at all. Um, yeah, just let people get on and do what they want to do, you know. Again, if it's, the content's good and it's to your liking, then it's cool, you know. Um... I'm actually thinking of doing um, like a question block, really, for me. I do get a lot of people asking me questions, but it gets lost in all the comments. Because you've got so much media now. You've got Twitter, you've got Facebook, you've got UK Back, you know, all the forums. 
what I've done is I've set up a, a um, mail, email address. It's nintendoarcade at yahoo.com. Pretty easy and simple to remember, guys. If you want to ask me any questions and you want them read out on this channel, I'm quite happy to do that. Also, I'd like you to send me pictures of your games room. You know, maybe we can do a games room tour. But if you don't want that, you can always just show me, send me a picture and I'll show it on my channel of your game room set up, you know, or your collection. I absolutely love that. And if there's any questions you want to ask, just send me an email to nintendoarcade at yahoo.com and I'll answer them on this channel for you, okay? That's where we're going. And in the next video, the Super Nintendo video, I will be mentioning the competition that we'll be doing for the channel, which I'm really excited to do. So that's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll try and get another one out this week, and well, we'll do, because I know I've got the time. But until then, um, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Welcome back. Hey, hey, hey. You would talk to yourself all the time. You would talk to me. You would talk to you. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know who you are. I seem to talk to you every week, you know? Anyway. <laughs>